Tottenham cannot make this mistake again. We simply can't. We have been here time after time after time before. We have to get this right. If you're new to the channel, please do go down and drop a like on the video. It's a double upload day yet again. The work rate is insane. If you're enjoying it, please do go down and smash a like on the video. It does absolute wonders to the channel. And make sure you hit that subscribe button as well. Tottenham, this summer window, cannot make this mistake again. What I'm guessing at is time and time again under this ownership, we've, there's been a hype around Tottenham are going to make a marquee signing. Tottenham will fix these cracks. Tottenham will go and get a number six. Tottenham will go out and get a centre-back. Tottenham will get a winger. This window, we need marquee signings. Say it with me. Marquee signings. If Ange Postacoglu delivers top four in his first season as Tottenham manager, he will have exceeded 90% of all expectations set on him by rival fans, by Spurs fans, by the media, by journalists, by practically everyone, the domestic side of the game has not gone to plan. Tottenham desperately needed a trophy and for whatever reason, it didn't go to plan. However, the Champions League, if Tottenham get in that, that will be an achievement this season. It's not winning a trophy. It's not, it's not what exactly we want in terms of the whole season, but it will be a tick. Now comes the summer transfer window, and we have been linked to hundreds of players. Edison, Santiago Jimenez, Tony, Watkins, Gordon, Rafinha, Neto, Eze, absolutely everyone. Now I'm going to break down for you my number two transfer targets this summer window. And we have to, have to, Get this right. We cannot make a mistake again. Under Jose Mourinho, we wanted Ruben Diaz. We got Joe Roden. Under Poch, we wanted Mane. We got Onkadu. Conte wanted Bastoni. We got Joe Roden. We have to go out and make this marquee signings. And yes, you could say Tottenham have got a plan. Yes, you could say Tottenham have got an identity. We've got a style of football back. The whole fan base is enjoying the football when it works. When it doesn't, it's a different argument. But collectively as a whole, we are satisfied. Now, the next step on this journey is to sprinkle some fairy dust. The recruitment at Tottenham under Ange Postacoglu so far has been very good. James Madison, Van de Ven, Radu Dragusin, Vicario. We've implemented Udogi and Saar into the team. You know, James Madison has been a magician. Brennan Johnson's contributed with goal contributions. The recruitment, the only one that people have got question marks over is Brennan Johnson. Now, Tottenham have got a choice this summer. We have got a choice. And I'll lay out the three choices we've got. Let's say this is all providing we finish in Europe. Well, unless something catastrophic happens, we will be in Europe next season. Currently sitting fifth in the Premier League, three points off of Aston Villa. Now, option one, you go and spend big money on a wide player slash creative player. Option two, you go and spend big, big money on a number six. Option three, you go and spend big, big money on a midfielder. I don't see a window in which Tottenham do all three. I see a window in where Tottenham go and make two 50 to 60 million pound signings, providing we get in the Champions League. Let me break that down for you. Option one, an attacking midfield player and the forward player. And then you bring in a relatively good defensive midfielder. The attacking options we're being linked to, Pedro Neto, Rafinha, my number one target, from an attacking option this season is Eze. Next season, sorry, is Eze. He genuinely 
makes so much sense. I don't think there's a player who sits the, fits the system better. He's homegrown, right? He's 25 years of age. He's part of the same agency as majority of the Spurs players in the CAA-based limited company. He's already in London. He can play left side in midfield, attack in midfield, and as a forward player. His contract expires June 30th, 2027. And the guy is homegrown. The only downside to signing Eze is Crystal Palace are a very good club when it comes to selling their players. And he last signed the contract on the 10th of November, 2023. But he fits the bill the most. Option two, you go and spend big, big money on a number six. And then you buy relatively good forwards and midfielders. And option three, you go and sign a world-class attacking midfield player. Let me know your thoughts down below. What option would you personally take? Now, it's no coincidence that Tottenham's season has been a bit up and down because of the protection our back four does not have. We've kept two clean sheets in our last 19 games and we've conceded 42 goals in the Premier League. We've conceded more goals in the Premier League than Everton, more goals in the Premier League than Aston Villa, Manchester City, Liverpool, Arsenal, two more, two less than Wolves, two less than Brighton. The positive side of it is we've scored more goals than anyone in the league other than the top four. So we need a balance. And I believe, providing we had an attacking midfield player, a defensive-minded player, and a forward, we would be top three. No doubt. There, there is a lot to be positive for going forward. A hell of a lot. The style of play, the fact the club's together, the performances, scored a lot of goals, fifth in the league with a game in hand. We win that game in hand, we're sitting fourth. There's a lot to be positive. But this does not stop here. In order for Tottenham to be a great team, we have to go and implement players into this system of real quality. Real quality. We have to. Real quality. Genuinely. Now, I look at it, I look at it this way, right? If Tottenham go and buy Eze, let's say a defensive-minded field player, maybe a Zubamendi from Sociedad, and we buy a forward. So you're looking at probably around, this is all estimation, £150 million. Pounds. Tottenham get rid of Ndombele, Tottenham get rid of Lo Celso, Tottenham get rid of Brian Hill, Tanganga's contract gets ripped up just like Dyer's and Larice's was. Tottenham now, the foundations are laid. The foundations are laid. Pedro Poro, Romero, Van de Ven, Destiny Udogi. You then get a number six just to help support the spine. You've got James Madison from an attacking perspective, and you've got Son from an attacking perspective. What you then need to do is sprinkle fairy dust around that. If you look at all the great teams in the Premier League, they've all had a fantastic spine. Let's look at Chelsea under Mourinho. You had, you had Lampard, JT, Czech, and drug bar. You know, Manchester City had company, Edison, David Silva, De Bruyne, Aguero. We need our own spine. Now, you get that from buying up another forward, buying a central midfield player, and buying an attacking midfield player. There is a lot of good players at this football club. Bisuma, Saar, Son, the defence, Vicario. But we're just missing a few key players to make us go from a good team to a great team. And Eze, for me, would be my number one choice. Now, when you look at the forwards, you've got the likes of Neto, you've got Rafina, you've got Santiago Jimenez, you've got Gordon who's being linked. We have to get the forward. We can't make this mistake again. We can't. We've been here too many times. Unkadu, Janssen. We've, we, we, we've been here, oh, so many times, man. We have been here too many times where we've got the forwards wrong. We've got the forwards wrong. And if you think the last three years, every forward we've brought into this football club has divided opinion. Johnson, Richarlison, Solomon, Timo Werner. 
when we buy, when we bought defenders, Romero, Van de Ven, or Madison, Udogi, Poro, everyone's like, do you know what? That makes sense. We have to get this right. If Tottenham really want to be, when Daniel Levy is coming out saying he wants Tottenham to go up and challenge and, and, and be, you know, the best we can be, we have to get this right. There is no margin for error now. The forwards we've signed in recent years have been okay, but we need to sign a great forward. The, the, the best forward we've signed in recent years, in, and it's been eight years, nine years ago, was Son. Every other player has come and go. Lorente, Bergwijn, you know, everyone's divided on Timo Werner, Brennan Johnson, Richarlison. We need quality, quality in the front line, like Liverpool have in Jota, Salah, Nunes, Gakpo. You know, just Diaz, players who can score at any point in the game. Tottenham need more of that. Players like Eze, players like Neto, players like Rafinha. All these players we've been linked to, just get some of them over the line and get the business done in the summer early. We have got a massive, massive April throughout the remainder of the season. Games against our biggest rivals, Arsenal. Games against West Ham, Newcastle United away. Manchester City still to play. Chelsea still to play. You know, it's going to be a very up and down remainder of the season. But providing we get into the Champions League, we have to, have to get back in the Champions League. We can't do any of this without that Champions League money. And that just is where we're at right now. You know, I, when, when I look at Tottenham, I think, in order for us to be a successful football club, we need the foundations to be laid, we need investment, and we need a plan. Now, we've got a plan. The foundations are laid. Now it's up to Daniel Levy. If Daniel Levy really wants to take Tottenham to a level where we're at, he's got to prove it this summer window. Because Ange, Ange has already said, I'm here to win trophies. You know? And when the trophies have been in this season, have been a few hiccups. We've, we, you know, I didn't... Like, going out to flipping Fulham and going out to... You know, going out to flipping Man City is disappointing, but it is what it is. And we can still finish this season strong, but in the summer, we have to get investment and we have to focus on silverware. Like, top four is great. Jurgen Klopp finished eighth in his first season. Arteta finished eighth in his first season. Providing we have a good rest of the season, we should finish fourth. But we've got to get some of this right. We have to get some of this right. Let me know your thoughts down below if you haven't already. I'll see you all soon. I am out.